Hey friends, welcome to my second composition notebook art journal series. I'm doing watercolor today. I had to re-record this intro because as I did it the first time, my dog was chewing on his bone right next to me and that's all you could hear. So I'm cracking up. Anyway, I am taking sheets of watercolor paper and you know, one sheet won't quite cover both spreads and I don't really wanna leave that much of a margin. So I'm cutting it down to size and it's a little more narrow than the page itself, but I think I like that because it'll just allow the page turning a little bit easier um, and the gutter won't be quite as sandwiched in there. So what I'm using is watercolor crayons. My kids actually got these when they took a homeschool art class years ago. So they have just been in my art supplies. And now that I've really gotten into experimenting with art, I was like, ooh, fun. So it's fun because you can draw your lines, color your lines first, and then go in with a wet brush and activate the watercolor. So I like that it, it gives you control, I guess, so to speak. You can clean off your brush in between colors to control how much bleeding you want and how much mixing you want on the page. So that's another kind of an advantage that um, I like about using these crayons. Although I'm not a very experienced watercolor artist to begin with, but I'm just experimenting and having fun. So another thing that you can take notice of, so like right here when I started activating this blue color, I kind of kept it apart from the purple because I wanted to have a solid separation. So you can also control how much you want the colors to mix and blend by um, letting the first layer dry before you go back over it, um, where, where you can still cover, but it won't mix in the same way. I consider myself kind of a lazy artist as far as <laughs> like the big picture. I don't like to plan too much. I just like to dive in and, and just see where my page takes me. So I don't really have a plan compositionally yet to know where this um, page is gonna go, what it's gonna look like. I am choosing the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel so that whatever is next to each other, if it does blend together, it's not gonna turn to a kind of a muddy color that I don't like. So to avoid doing that, um, I avoid putting secondary colors next to each other because that tends to make browns, which is totally fine if that's what you're going for, but that's not what I'm going for. I want all bright colors. So in other words, on the rainbow order, if you're always kind of neighboring colors like green and blues and, um, you know, and then next to the greens, you can do yellows and next to the blues, you can do purples or pinks or reds.
Okay, so the first stage of my page is finished and now I am going to refer to some of the pages I've made in the past. See kind of what my plan is. I haven't done this style in a long time, but for a while it was like my jam and that was what I was doing a lot. Um, so when I first started doing it, I, my tendency was to outline exactly on the separation between colors, but then I found like in the page that I just looked at that I really liked having some of the um, pockets be a blend of colors. So um, I think you'll see what I mean as, as it starts to unfold. But yeah, I'm starting with black to um, create my shapes around my existing watercolors and from there, I will doodle on. starting with this thin pigment ink pen but it is kind of getting sucked into the watercolor I've, I remember when I did this um, type before that sometimes I actually do a whole layer of Mod Podge at this stage so that the markers and paints um, can go over the top a little bit easier because there's something about the watercolor paper with all the watercolor on it that just kind of sucks the ink down in there if you're just using like pens um, but I'm having a little bit better luck this is a little metallic acrylic paint marker um, but you really can't go wrong with Posca I think I'd eventually go over with a thin Posca marker there So I want to make sure that I'm using all the supplies that I have. So I have some other markers in my stash that don't get as much attention. So I wanted to play with those too. So what I'm going to do is create a test strip on this little uh, piece of paper. Um, this is actually the trim from the, the watercolor paper that I um, cut off. So I am just creating kind of a test strip so that I can use the markers on this to see how it will do on my page. So yeah, it feels pretty dry. It's pretty close. Ta -da. Okay, so now I can go in with like my metallic markers and see like, okay, how does this work with the different colors? How does it cover? Yeah, so that's helpful. I found that this metallic set works really well. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where to buy it because I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. <laughs> It was one of those, you know, got got them at some like discount store and I looked them up online once and I don't think they carry this style anymore. Sorry. So I'm just moving around the page, playing with different colors, different markers, different patterns. And yeah, I won't know what it's going to look like until I get to the end.
okay, I'm satisfied with the way that looks and I'm ready to put it into my art journal. And first I'm going to use a corner rounder to um, snip off the corners on the edges because my notebook itself has rounded corners. So this will just kind of make it fit nicer. And I'm just gonna use regular old Elmer's school glue. And because the watercolor paper is so thick, it's um, gonna curl naturally and have a hard time. So I'm using this nice thick encyclopedia to press it down. And I don't have another really heavy book handy, so I'm gonna use some big bull clips here to just see if that will work to kind of hold it down while the glue is dr binding or drying. So I think I let that go for just a little while. And then once I um, removed it, the book flattened it out really nicely. And then I took the clips off and then there's just this edge in the middle. I'm going to add just a little bit more glue um, to try to get that edge to fit all the way down. But it's it's in my my book is getting so thick. It's a little wonky now. So I'm going to put a little parchment paper in there, put, put it down um, as deep as I can get it to try to get the, the page to get really really flat on there and I'm gonna put my weight there and I let it sit there for I don't know I went and ate dinner or something so I'm back now and everything is really nice it's really flat and it's really glued down well to my pages and then I'm gonna kind of hide the obviousness of the gutter by kind of extending the pattern to cross over the little chasm there and I'm not really too worried about it looking perfect or matching perfectly it's just enough to when you flip through the book, you're not gonna feel like there's a big white stripe going down the middle of my spread. So I'm just imitating the colors best I can with my Posca pens and um, yeah, a little bit of pattern in there too, but uh, again, I'm not making it perfect. Even some of the lines didn't quite line up either because <laughs> when you pull them apart, you lose some of that arch. So there it is. There's my finished page. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope that you enjoyed watching my process and that you're inspired to go make some art. Come back and hang out with me again. Till next time, have a blessed day, week, month, life.